Hi and welcome back to my channel. Let's talk about background services. And this video, I want to simulate a scenario where you are sending an email and you don't want to do it in the spot. You want to uh, do it in the background and give user a better user experience. The scenario is like this. Uh, user registers in your application and you want to send a confirmation email or anything happens in your application, you want to send a notification in the background uh, because it's an async operation and it might take time and there are two ways to do this first is you make user wait uh, for your um, email to be sent or your async operation to be end and then you redirect the user to a new page uh, right now I have a hello world message I am going to send this uh, this is going to be sent using an email, but I'm not doing it in this part directly. I am sending that message in a, in the background using a, a queue. I, I have a queue and I add this message to that queue. And when the time is right, hopefully in less than a couple of seconds, uh, the queue will be uh, read by a background service and the email would be sent so what exactly is happening in my project sending email in my project deliberately takes two seconds i have, I have i'm not actually sending emails but i am making user wait for two seconds or we can change it to three seconds it doesn't matter really so i'm making user to wait three seconds before email gets sent but as you saw in my code in my application user didn't wait three seconds it was instant when the user decided to uh, send an, a new message instantly user redirected to a new page and if i check my logs uh, i can see here that email was sent later a couple of seconds later uh, and i am doing it right here so how i uh, went from my razor page from this part of my application to a background service code uh, that is running in its own thread. Obviously, I need some kind of messaging or some kind of queue to signal the background service that I am doing something and uh, it has to take care of that. So to do that, I created an interface and the only thing in that interface is uh, a queue. A queue that takes a string uh, as my message and keeps it. Uh, and I have another class that inherits from this interface, implements the um, queue, uh, instantiate the queue, and then I can add items to this queue. Also, I make sure that I am using singleton dependency injection uh, for this task job because I don't want a new instance of my task job with every new request. Uh, I'm going to have one queue for the whole uh, life cycle of my application. And then I have a background service is inheriting from background service class and here I'm injecting it. I'm also injecting a logger because I'm going to log things in the background. And uh, here I have an execute async method, which is common with uh, background services and overriding this method. So this is nothing new. You have this method implemented in background service. And if you want to change the behavior, you override it like this. And I have an infinite loop. I'm just uh, looping through 
every uh, every seconds delaying every one second between each loop and checking the queue if anything new is in the queue i am dequeuing that item and sending the email as you can see this is working uh, pretty fine actually because uh, i can always go to this part of my application uh, send a new message and i think i have a um, yes and my message will be sent in a couple of seconds exactly three seconds later now exactly three seconds later because it takes three seconds to for an email to be sent in my application so that's a great implementation it works but it has some problems because i'm not taking into account that uh, th this is a concurrent situation uh, multiple users can use my this page at the same time and multiple users will be adding items to the same queue and uh, because it's not concurrent or say say it's safe uh, it uh, creates a lot of problems and some of my uh, my messages could not be queued uh, let me show you an example uh, to test this in a scale i added an api uh, it was easier uh, to test an api uh, and here i am just sending message to this uh, action in my controller uh, and each message uh, should be queued to my task job uh, so let's bombard this action with messages I am going to use Bombardier, you can download it from GitHub and it can simulate uh, load on your application and there are, there are a lot of features, it's easy to use so I recommend uh, using this very simple app it is written in Go I think so uh, let's go ahead and test uh, my API uh, my application is running in the background and uh, signaling that it is working uh, using the seri log and here I am creating 100 connections uh, from 100 different uh, ports or different connections. Uh, this is the number of connections. This is the number of requests that you are going to you, are, you don't you want to send. And um, I'm using the method post. And the header is JSON. I'm sending a, my message in JSON format. I have a file called message.js in uh, in uh, my uh, fuller and uh, now this is the target URL that I'm going to send my message so let's enter and we have sent all the messages and 91 mess one ninety two message queued uh, out of 100 and they are being sent uh, but first of all we sent 100 and we got only 92 so that's a problem and some of these messages uh, will be empty like this uh, you see uh, I sent welcome to my page to every request but some of these uh, are empty so the correct value didn't uh, queued in my uh, list in my queue uh, it was an empty value we have two problems right now that the concurrency is not taken into account uh, into my application also we are sending emails one by one so over a thousand emails it will take 3000 seconds uh, and this is usual that is usually not what we want uh, with the web application we want to be able to send them all together it's if it's possible and and let's see how we can fix these problems
So I made changes to send emails all together. My task didn't change, so I'm not still implementing the concurrency uh, and fixing the problem with uh, set saving. Uh, but I am sending all emails together. This time I am creating a list of tasks. I am counting the number of tasks in my queue, number of items in my queue, and dequeuing every item and uh, sending them as a task, uh, you know, creating a task for each email and adding them to my collection here and waiting for all of these tasks to be finished. And then I wait for one second and check the queue again. So I don't have to wait one second between each email, uh, but it takes about uh, 2000 milliseconds or 3000 milliseconds for each email. Let's try this one out. Let's run the application again. Um, making sure this is working. My background console is, my log console is here. So let's run the last request again. Enter. And this time we have 100 messages queued, but as you can see, some of them are empty. As I discussed before, this is a problem because of the concurrency and self saving. Uh, but we sent all emails uh, together at the same time, and we didn't have to wait uh, to uh, three, 300 second, seconds um, for 100 emails. So that's an improvement, but still we lose some data along the way. So let's fix that problem too. So the issue with concurrency is not reading from the queue. It's actually in adding items to the queue because multiple threads uh, have access to uh, this method here. Um, is actually for every request to my application, uh, Ace Method Core uses a different thread to handle the request. And so different threads uh, are being activated when you send 100 requests at the same time, probably 100 uh, threads. And 100 threads are reading the uh, task job, reading the queue, and adding item to this queue. So uh, things like base conditions happen because items need to be added uh, after each other. And sometimes before one is being added, uh, another one is requests request to be added. Something like that, they, they race for being queued. And uh, the weird behavior that we see happens along the way. So to fix this, there's an easy solution uh, for our simple application, and that is using the concurrent queue. So I can just change my uh, branch. Uh, uh, let's ignore these changes. Just change the um, seconds value, uh, but Let's go to my concurrent implementation. In my concurrent implementation, uh, let's say by the whole project. In my concurrent project, uh, my concurrent uh, implementation, I just changed the queue from being a simple queue to concurrent queue. And concurrent queue manages the thread, threads and makes sure all items are being added correctly. So I don't have to care about the threading issue or concurrency. And that's that problem solved. And as you can see, nothing changed here. Nothing changed here. It's the exact same code. I'm just having the same collection of tasks, adding items to that collection, and sending all of them at the same time. Uh, I can also go here and change the delay, three seconds, five seconds, it's a simulation. 
so let's run the application again and let's send the requests again um, bombardier and enter so um, we have sent all the requests and as you can see i don't see any weird behavior here all the uh, requests are queued correctly there's no empty values here and exactly 100 messages queued and exactly 100 messages sent so uh, right now i have a thread safe uh, a concurrent friendly uh, application that can send emails in a bulk uh, or as a batch in the background of course there are other ways to implement the same behavior we can use more sophisticated solutions like maybe hangfire or quartz library uh, or uh, maybe using mediate r for publication and notification uh, but I tried to have a very simple code with a, the same libraries and tools that uh, exist uh, right inside the uh, .NET Core itself. So that's my demo for today. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please uh, have put a comment down here. And you can download the source code from my GitHub. Uh, see you soon.